good morning to you, Trinidad and Tobago, and to our audience across the world. My name is Keaton Shaw, and this is AM Prime on WESN, Content Capital. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Hope all is well with you, and uh, hope wherever you are in TNT, the weather is treating you well. Yeah, it's been really, really hot lately, uh, but hopefully and later on we will get some good weather. I know that my director, Ryan Gomezberg, is smiling because he, he told me that I should be a meteorologist because of my predictions. And I know that he's probably even laughing more at that comment in itself. But uh, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with us uh, as we get into a packed lineup this morning. And uh, starting with an interview, uh, and I'll be honest with you, viewers, I've been trying to actually wrap my head around introducing this uh, particular interview. Because it focuses on an individual, Kayla Jordan Paris, and her story is quite incredible. It's quite amazing. Uh, in fact, uh, at the age of 10 years old, Kayla was diagnosed with lupus. And she went through quite a lot. To describe it to you this morning is not, my, not in my position. My guests will definitely do that. Uh, but her story is inspiring because no matter what Kayla faced, she always had a real positivity about her. She always seemed to be a step above all her challenges. And in doing so, she inspired many. Kayla was a spoken word artist and poet. And one of the most interesting things to me is that beyond that, she actually enjoyed writing midnight robber speeches. How many people actually do that still? That in itself is incredible. And through it all, Kayla made many memories along the way made many friends and touched many lives, inspiring many. And unfortunately, when she lost her battle to lupus, the story only continued because the memories she created and those she inspired, well, it lives on today. Through a book that was recently launched, I believe it was one week ago, that was authored by her grandmother, Miss Christine Paris de Beek. Uh, but before we get into that story, I'd like to welcome to the program uh, the producer of AM Prime, uh, our colleague and news anchor at WESN, Miss Naomi McNish. Good morning, Naomi, and good to see you on this morning. Hi, morning. I'm so happy to be here this morning. Very excited. Uh, well, Naomi, it's, it's always a pleasure having you on, and I'm going to welcome our guest shortly, but I believe that Kayla was a very, very special individual to you. Could you describe that relationship for us? I can. Kayla, has, Kayla was my friend for many years. Uh, we met in Form 1 of Bishop Ampty High School. Um, from then on till 2023, which was the year she died, um, we've maintained a close relationship. Um, she is the pinnacle of what friendship meant and i'm not just being biased she was everything that anybody wanted to have in a friend so oh the pinnacle <laughs> of her purpose something that we all hope yeah. to experience and kayla certainly brought that because the the stories that i've heard and, and what i've been exposed to quite incredible so naomi it gives uh, and, and you know it gives us great pleasure now so welcome to the program uh, the author of uh, the book Standing Tall, which was launched last Wednesday, and also Keela's grandmother, uh, Miss Christine Paris to be. Good morning, Miss Paris to be, and welcome to the program. Good morning, Keita. Thank you very much for welcoming me. How Happy are you doing today? How, how are you doing? I, how are you keeping? I am doing fine. I'm good. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us, indeed. And uh, it, it's this particular story with so many factors and so many individuals that, that uh, Kayla touched and, and all that she was able to do, all that she was able to achieve. You know, sitting on and writing this, this book in particular, how, how were you able to get all of that uh, achievements, all of that uh, Kayla was able to do into this one book that details her memories? Well, thank the Lord for technology, because at least on my cell phone, and I mean, uh, while I am not a nerd of the technology, you know, I do keep a running record of daily happenings, daily events, 
and I was able to go back into my phone for a couple of years, a few years back and get most of the details, you know, and, and beyond that, then I had to fill in. I didn't realize it would have been such a task until I started doing it. And then I realized that I really had to be on point with all the details. So thank the Lord for the cell phone, you know, because that assisted me greatly. Yeah. Technology. As yeah. we've been learning, the technology can be your friend and your enemy when it wants yeah. to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, did you, uh, really, why did you want to, to author this particular book? Because it's been just one year. And throughout this process, many families are still going through that grieving process. You, you've taken a different attitude. You've taken a different approach where, oh, no, no, I want to celebrate, Kayla. How difficult was it balancing all that you and your family have gone through and also at the same time getting this book out there for all to read and experience? Well, actually, writing the first part of the book wasn't difficult at all. It was just a just you know, brought back memories. I was just recreating her life and so on. And that part was not difficult. The difficult part came to just writing her final hours. That was, that was a great difficulty. And I thought of doing it because Kayla herself had planned to do this book in 2023. This was to be her project for 2023. Unfortunately, she died very early in 2023 and wasn't able to start it. So one day it just hit me that, you know, why don't I do it? And uh, I guess that was it. So it just took me many nights, I guess, of, um, I didn't really write much during the day. I mostly used the nights to, to write all that I had to do. I didn't realize it would have been such a task, but writing part, the writing part more or less was easy. The hardest part came in doing the editing and the proofreading and the final details. Sorry, so Naomi smiling there for a moment, sir. Uh, but Miss uh, Paris, in living all of these memories and and uh, really, you know, as you said, the most difficult part was having to write Kayla's final hours. At any point in time, did you just find yourself in a position where you did not want to go through this? I could imagine that in celebrating Kayla's life, there was so much to put into the book and then coming down to the that part where having to actually describe her final hours did you find yourself at any point in time not even wanting to continue writing this book uh, not really i just knew that once i had started it was something i wanted to complete uh, more or less on, on kayla's behalf i wanted to complete it so it was it was okay i mean once i wrote the final part that was it i didn't really go back to it or anything i left it up to my two friends who were doing the editing and the proofreading to come up with anything, because even now, if you might look at the book, I don't ever look at the final hours. I read the rest of the book and I leave out that part, you know? But um, I don't think there was any point in time that I really wanted to stop writing. Of course, during the course of writing it, there were days that I really had to um, put myself in the mood that I was going to deal with the book tonight or so, you know? But other than that, I was, I was okay. Is this, is this book something you think Kayla would be proud of? Oh, like, yes. Oh, yes. I, I think that she would have enjoyed it. Of course, I am doing it from my reading of the situation and stuff. And if she herself had done it, she would have been able to give us more or less her feelings. You know? I mean, we had a good relationship. She would often talk. But, you know, you don't really ever know exactly what's going through a person's mind. And, I mean, she really did go through a lot. You know, so that all her pain and, and sufferings and so we most probably didn't know half of what she was going through because she always projected a very cheerful countenance all the time and so, you know. So I think she would have um, been pleased that I made the effort on her behalf. You know, I think she would have enjoyed the end result. On that note, um, can you give us a quick overview of Kayla and who she was? Oh, that, that's great. That's, um, that's saying, well, first to begin, she, got, she was diagnosed with the lupus at earlier than 10 years old. She was diagnosed actually about eight years, you know, but she maybe had started having symptoms from the year before or so, but she was actually diagnosed at eight years. 
And I remember her first major illness when she was 10 years old when she had her first major illness. And at that point, you know, she was very um, angry. You know, she said, why on earth do I have lupus? Why did God give me lupus? I don't want to have lupus. You know, why didn't he give all the kidnappers and the rapists and the murderers? You know, but um, but beyond that, once she recognized that this was her lot in life, she learned as much as she could learn about the disease. At every step, she knew what was more or less going on. She was on top of everything, so much so that a couple of her doctors were quite amazed that she knew all of her medications. She knew the generic terms and so. And... um. All I can say is that thereafter, she really coped with the disease. So that lots of times we even forgot that she was ill, you know? And um, and I'm sure you, our friends, would know that, you know, in, in school and stuff like that. There were many days when she really was a little bit under the weather and you knew that she was not capable of, of being her full self. But on a lot of occasions, she was, you know, just a normal teenager. She never really... Um, what you may call it, except for her major illnesses, she never really gave in to, you know, her, her illness. She or never let it conquer her. I think now I, I, I also understand uh, a bit more as per the uh, the title of the book, Standing Tall. It seems as though Keela, uh, through all that she faced, always found a way to conquer all of, of these challenges and, and all that she faced and all that she went through. She she brought a lot of positivity and inspiration to others. Did did Keila actually ever seem to complain about that at all? With with all that she faced, Naomi keeps telling me she she used to be like the rock uh, yes. amongst all the friends. Yes, she was, and I mean she was more or less like the leader in all yeah. the ex escapades oh. and stuff. You know, yeah, she was she was really the leader. Um. There were some times, I mean, mostly like very early morning, like when she came to live with me, she would um, come downstairs and she would be very, um, just a little out of it, a little sour, you know. And when I said, she said, Granny, it's okay. I didn't have such a good night. I'm fine, you know. I just need to um, catch myself a little bit. But beyond that, I mean, most days, you know, she was okay. Nighttime, I guess, when the pains really would maybe surface. You know how things always seem to be a little worse at night. So at night, you know, she would have these pains, whether it was chest pains when she had to do dialysis and she was doing the peritoneal dialysis. Um, that set of fluid and stuff, we always had a toss up and a fight with the fluids because the fluids would settle at various parts of her body. So that was um, a difficult part of um, of the process for her. But, um, but other than that, she was um, more or less, I think, you know, most people couldn't even believe that she was really ill, that she had anything. She didn't portray that, you know? So I guess um, that was just Kayla. Yes. I don't think we can go through this without touching on or talking about her poems because Kayla was an extremely ardent poet. She her, she had a way with words, and I think that was one of the way the ways that she coped with a lot of the things that were going on in her life. That was going on in her life, sorry. Um, so, and the book Standing Tall has a number of her poems, if not all. No, no, um, no, not all. <laughs> not all, yeah. Not, not so, all, not all, yeah. Because but, I also um, I also understand that that this is not this is a book written. Uh, about Kayla for Kayla, but Kayla herself was also an author because I learned that she had her poems published as well. Yes, yes, she did. When she was about 15, she had her first book of poems published. And quite a few of them she must have written, um, I think maybe from the time she was about 12 or so. And I didn't realize that she had had a, a body of works until she maybe reached about 14 or 15 years old. You know, so then I was able to, um, I knew Jerry Bessel from Paria Publishing. And we showed them to Jerry and he said, yes, uh, you know, they were worth publishing. He said they were a little bit morbid for a child of her age. Yeah. But they were, you know, so I guess, and those poems really are her frustrations and her disappointments and her, um, you know, all her, that was her way of coping, as, as, as um, Naomi said. You know, it was her way of coping. She let out all her feelings in words. 
I think just to clear that up, mm. no. Um, the Kayla, when Kayla was 15, she had a, a book published yes. um, with her poems, yes. right? So this book now, while it also does have her poems, she was, um, I think she can be considered an author as well because a lot of her journal entries, um, her private journal entries are published into the book. So reading the book, you do get a sense of um, Kayla directly speaking because you hear her whole personality comes through in these journal entries. So apart from the poems, we have that as well, which is very exciting because you get a lot of, um, as people say these days, tea <laughs> as to what was going on in Kayla's life. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting. Yes. Yes. You you speak with, with such uh, enthusiasm and you also speak with a, a great sense. Kayla seems to really played a pivotal role in, in your life and has uh, touched you in so many ways. Um, you speak with also a great sense of awe. Describe to me, you know, Kayla as a friend. I've, we've gotten a description of Kayla from, from her grandmother, but from you, describe to us Kayla as a friend. There's not enough words to describe Kayla as a friend, um, but I, I'll keep it very simple. She she was always there you know i never doubted her loyalty i never doubted her sense of her, she had a lot of love to give and she never made anybody feel left out she mm -hmm. as much friends as she had around her and people around her she was always there so whenever you needed her you could always count on her she was there she would answer her phone even if she's not feeling well she will still answer hear what you have to say and then say that she's not feeling well, <laughs> yeah. you know? It was always everybody else and then her. So in the reverse now, we always had to, you know, Kayla, you have to put yourself first sometimes. You have to remind her that, or we would be there for her or try to be there for her as much as she's been there for us, you know? Yeah. She, she was a great friend, a great friend. So Ms. Paris, to be with this, that, that has been said now and the essence of Keela really being put into this particular book. Uh, is this book now available for, for members of the public to get a hand uh, on a copy so that they themselves can read it? Well, I guess they can get the copy, uh, not yet at any bookshops. I have not approached any of the bookstores for them. What I did, or like before I printed, I sent out uh, my circle of friends, uh, her father did, and um, Naomi and her best friend, Shanique, they also did. So I got an idea of how many people would have been interested, and I just printed um, maybe about, um, maybe less than 100 more of the books. So right now, they're only available through me or through one of her friends, Naomi Shanique. Anybody can get in touch with us. Um, and um, they would be, you know, made available. I, they could come and collect or we deliver. And that's about it, you know. Until I see exactly how much effect the book has on the public, I will know if I need to print more and approach the bookstores, you know. But for right now, it's just more or less circle of friends and beyond. Well, the thing is, I think I'm going to have to put in my my word, my good word with Naomi for a copy of this book. Because okay. I there's a lot that, that I want to read about Kayla writing her poems. You you described it as morbid. She herself, in a previous interview, described it as being morbid because her first set of works uh, really focused on the ills of society or the ill elements of society, okay. rather. And then reading about her... Uh, writing with net robber speeches. She loved to perform, she loved to sing. But I also, you know, reading from a previous interview, she, you know, she said that she was looking forward to the future because she was looking to publish her second book. And I, I'm not so sure if she was ever able to, to do that. But this book in itself, from all that has been described to me this morning, I, I want to get a copy of, of, of this book, Standing Tall, uh, by, um, the story of Kayla Jordan Paris. But you know, before we go, Miss Paris, from the, the story and the life that Kayla lived, what really w was something that you gained from Kayla? Apart from a granddaughter, mm -hmm. she lived with you 
uh, you saw her struggles, you saw her triumphs. How would you describe Kayla's story to yourself and how much did she inspire you as a grandmother and a granddaughter? Wow, that's a tough question. Um, Kayla was, um, what can I say? She, her, her strength and her, what I would say, maybe her fortitude and her patience with her illness was really amazing. You know, she went through enormous pain, um, but she was always able to put a brave face on it. You know, she, she had me, um, well, totally amazed by the fact that she could watch all that was being done to her when it was being done, whether it was taking blood, giving her the injections or whatever it is. And she always found a way to make more or less light of her situation. You know, her arms would be all black and blue, her fingers all swollen and stuff from all the pricks and the relocation of ports and so that she had to get, but she would always say, well, oh, Lord, look at me, look at my hands, you know. She had an issue with her, her wisdom teeth and the one gave her particular trouble. She would just say, oh, Lord, look, I look like one of those dogs with the, with the big cheeks, you know. <laughs> she had an amazing, um, amazing attitude to life. She had a, 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 I don't know, a really surprising um, ability to cope with pain and to deal with pain. You know, that was truly amazing. When she came to live with us, she brought a sense of brightness, I guess, into the house. She had us, you know, watching more TV, looking at America's Got Talent and all these shows that we never even dreamt of looking at. And then she had this amazing capacity to love. And also, what was really amazing is that she never stayed vexed with anybody for any length of time. I think she knew that her time would have been limited, so she didn't have time to waste on being vexed and being at odds with anyone. So she always um, was able to, you mean she vexed with you, you know, you have a little argument in uh, five minutes and... Uh, 10 minutes time, she would be there by you, okay, granny, um, don't be like that, you know, granny, you know, so she was just, um, what I can say, a, a, a really amazing child, she had a, a love for life, um, a love for people, you know, she got, and a, a lot of it she got, I think, from her mother, because her mother, Simone, also had the same illness, and I think her mother was really able to relate to her, and um, her mother also, had a very um, outgoing personality and she really dealt with her illness well. So I think a lot of Kayla's um, ability to deal with her illness stemmed from her mother. Although her mother could recognize that Kayla was a little, maybe a step beyond her and she was, um, well, not really more in tune with her illness, but she was, um, she gave a, a, what you may call it, a, a she always projected a radiant and a bright light and stuff like that. She was a little beyond her mother, you know, but her mother herself was able to recognize it. And she also had a younger sister who also has the disease. And um, I guess she was just a, a shining star for them all. Kayla, to me, sounds as though in the, the life that she lived and the time that she spent here uh, with us, she was a guardian angel to many, and um, she seemed mature way beyond the years. In the lives that 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 we all live, we hope to reach that level. We we hope to reach that mindset, and and we hope to to live a life just like that. It seems as though Kayla, with her time here, she was able to do all of that. Uh, it's yeah. quite incredible. Yeah. That Bed, Kayla lived many lives yeah. in her short 23 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she really was, she really was a lot more mature than her, her years, you know, and from a very young age. Eh? So it might have been, you know, well, not might have been. I would really say that it was because of her illness and because of all that she had to go through and also see her mother go through, you know, that that brought a real mature sense of the way she her outlook on life and so. She well, really was, yeah. Ms. Paris, that, that's the thing. You know, I know you say that, but there will be those who would opt to just allow such a diagnosis 
or such a life to to bring them down. They would give up almost instantly. And Kilo's like, no, no, you, you're not going to tell me yeah. who I am or, or how I'm going to live. Kilo's like, you know, I've got my time and I'm going to do a lot with it. And she certainly did. Yes, yes. And one of her poems, she did say that she had lupus, but lupus didn't have her, you know? So, yeah, I think she was able to cope with the lupus, but the fact that her kidneys failed um, a little and maybe in 2018, a good little way down the line from the from the um, first having the disease. I think the, the kidney failure was really um, put the, well, it was the icing on the cake for the lupus, really, put it that way. Not the icing on the cake for her, but really for the lupus, you know? So that really kind of trebled her illnesses and so, you know? But she was, I mean, she, she really was amazing in the way that she, she faced all the, um, all that was thrown at her and so because of the illness and so. And I remember one person even asking me, why did I allow her to go to university? You know, but um, I said, I, I mean, to my mind, I said, well, wait, what is she going to do? Just sit down and wait for the illness to overtake her, you know, and that wasn't, that wasn't Kayla and that wasn't me, no. you know, and, and, and given the way, you know, Kayla was and so full of life and looking to learn and stuff like that, university was the best for her. She always said that she went to university because of me, though, eh? you know, so I had to tell her, well, you're not doing it for me, you're doing it for yourself, because I was really planning for when. My turn came to leave her, and she would be left alone, that she would be in a position to maintain herself, and, and so, you know, but it was not to be, yeah. Kita. Can you, Kita? Kita, we are here with you. Your mic is muted. You see? I, I think yeah. Naomi is supposed to do most of the talking, that's why. <laughs> 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 that's what happened. <laughs> you're supposed to do most of yeah. but you know miss paris thank Christine. you very much yes, for yes. joining us on the program this morning i i yes i know before the program i i was uh, fondly calling you auntie christine as well because of, of, of naomi but mm -hmm. i want to thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning and as, as i was seeing when i was muted um i think really the attitude that kayla had and and her approach to life we can only hope to have an ounce of that in our lives. We Thank can you. really only hope to have just an ounce of that. We would go a long way. Thank you very much for joining us on the program this morning. This this really has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It was. And I know you said no hard questions. I hope we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Not really. Thank you. You were good. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Naomi. Thank you also. Thank you. Okay, bye. Take care, bye-bye. Have a good day, bye. bye. Naomi, I mean, I think, uh, if you found that I was struggling this morning a bit with this interview in particular, it's because there was so much that, that you know, you're reading about Kayla, hearing about Kayla. Like, I mean, Naomi and I sat down in the office once. We had a, a conversation at length about Kayla. It's so hard. It was so very difficult to describe just exactly who she was as an ind individual. And that's why even I'm curious more so to read this particular book, because learning about Kayla's story, about her attitude and about and her approach to dealing with things, it is absolutely incredible. And you may see for all those who met Kayla, you really were blessed. You really, really were fortunate. And for all those who had Kayla as a friend, got to call Kayla a friend, you really did something good in your previous life to get to experience that in this life. Ladies and gentlemen, we take a break here on AM Prime. We will return shortly to continue this morning's program. Stay with us.